You're watching the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Chase Senior. Hope all of you have had a fantastic week, having a fantastic weekend as well. On today's show, taking all of your 49ers-related questions about anything pertaining to San Francisco. We start off with one of our most loyal subscribers here on YouTube, Chew Allure, with this question. Should the Niners release Jimmy Garoppolo or cut him off the team? Does anybody know what's going to happen with Jimmy Garoppolo? After that NFC Championship game loss, I could have sworn that the Niners were going to trade him because I thought they're going to move forward with Trey Lance. They don't want the Jimmy Garoppolo baggage hovering over the head of their future franchise quarterback. And then, mysteriously, he has to undergo the shoulder surgery. He doesn't inform the team. That then impacts his trade value, and then there was a bunch of quarterback movement all across the National Football League, and now which teams actually need a quarterback? Carolina Panthers? Seattle Seahawks? That's about it. Could the New England Patriots come calling? Does it get to a point where there isn't a trade market for Garoppolo? I think he has to prove that he can stay healthy if that's the case. Maybe they net a fourth, fifth round pick. I think if he was healthy, he could have gotten back Maybe a two. If they do cut him, though, I won't be surprised just because of that base salary and that cap hit. And that cap hit going into this year, $26.9 million. Doe the one. Next up, what will be the starting secondary in week one? I'm going to take my best swing and my best guess here. I think Charvarius Ward is definitely going to be cornerback number one. Emmanuel Mosley cornerback two maybe he's in the slot either way he's on the field I think Ambry Thomas is on the field too Jimmy Ward starts at one of the safety spots and then they do end up re-signing Jaquaski Tart at this point Tart's 30 years old had a really good year last year he really knows D'Amico Ryan's defense very well I think it makes sense to bring him back for three to five million dollars and I think the Niners just have to clear up some money in order to bring him back. So I think that's what the secondary is going to be. A combination of Charvarius Ward, Emmanuel Mosley, Ambry Thomas, Jimmy Ward, and Jaquaski Tart. That right there is your secondary with a great defensive line and one of the most slept on linebacking cores in the NFL. Lucis just responded to your Twitter DM. If Jimmy Garoppolo is still on the Niners by the time the preseason starts, does that show the Niners front office has no confidence and they're shaky with their trust in Trey Lance. What do you think? I think it could be a combination of a couple of things. I think maybe if they hold on to Garoppolo and considering, you know, that base salary and that cap hit, given how astronomically high it is, maybe they don't have all that much confidence in Trey Lance. And look, I think the jury is out on Lance, obviously. He played two games last year. Outside of that, really limited snaps. I think the potential is there. Kid is 6'4", 225 pounds, can throw any ball on the field, inside, outside, down the seam, take the top off of the defense, throw outside the numbers. I love his athletic traits and his athletic ability. I think if he's the starter, Niners offense going to be better, more explosive, less predictable than it was with Garoppolo because he could really only throw in between the hashes, in between the numbers, and didn't really throw the deep ball all that much. If they do bring back Garoppolo, it's insurance for Lance not working out, him getting injured. This whole Garoppolo situation is pretty dumbfounding. It's pretty surprising, and it's been wild up to this point. Great question. Who is your prime breakout candidate for 2022? Speaking of Trey Lance, you think Trey's going to break out? I think he could reel off. 25 touchdowns and 11 picks with five more tutties on the ground. I think that would be a breakout season. I think Javon Kinlaw could break out as well. Let me know in the comment section who your prime breakout candidate is for this upcoming season. Another one of our loyal subscribers, just like everybody who's tuned in so far today. That was a burp. My voice did not crack. I'm not going through puberty. Who do you uh, think the 49ers will try to sign? Jadavian Clowney? I don't think they're going to sign Clowney. One, not really a scheme fit, although I think he can really fit in any scheme, and I think that he would play very well on the other side of Nick Bosa. I just think the Niners are set along the defensive line. They are stacked. I mean, they're two or three deep at every position along that defensive line. I don't think they're going to sign Clowney. Now, I think he's a good player. I think he's somewhat underrated. Nine sacks last year playing on the other side of Miles Garrett. I think Clowney has been overlooked because he's never produced crazy sack seasons 
but this guy is very good against the run, very good against the pass. He's a physical freak. That's what made him the number one pick out of South Carolina many years ago. I think he has gas left in the tank. I just don't think the Niners really need him. Just a dude, man. $5 donation. Thank you, my guy. Appreciate you very much. I think they're waiting for Jimmy to pass a physical to release him. This way, they owe him nothing. Yeah, it doesn't really work like that. There would be some financial hit there if you outright release Garoppolo. I do think they're waiting for him to pass a physical to see if they can trade him. That's where I think that part of your statement and your question comes into play. Pass a physical, prove to other teams that Garoppolo can throw, that the shoulder is healthy. We're talking about an injury-prone quarterback who's been off injured throughout his NFL career. Other teams are probably skeptical as to whether or not he can stay healthy. They need to see it, need to pass a physical. Anthony with another one sliding in. Despite signing Charvarius Ward, do you think we really upgraded our secondary or are we in the same spot as last year? I think the Niners secondary is vastly improved from a depth perspective and Charvarius Ward is better than any cornerback that was on this team last year. And I think Emmanuel Mosey's a good player. He didn't give up a single touchdown in coverage last year and was fantastic. I think Ambry Thomas going to continue to grow. I like Jason Verrett coming back on a one-year cheap prove-it deal as depth. I'd take Jason Verrett as a depth piece any day of the week over Josh Norman or Drake Kirkpatrick, who were awful last year. So, yeah, because the Niners actually employed Josh Norman, who was on the roster for the NFC Championship game, and for a short while, Drake Kirkpatrick. We don't have to worry about those cats any longer. So I think with that, yeah, the Niners secondary did upgrade, and I think they're just as good maybe if not better along the defensive line. Again, I always say this, but this is my team philosophy, right? Opposing quarterbacks don't have time to throw. Secondary, pressure gets taken off of them. With this team this year, do you think that San Francisco can make the playoffs? Give me a Y for yes in the comment section or give me an N for no. Let me know down in the comment section if you think the Niners are playoff bound. Today's show presented to you by the fine folks at Fanatics. The season is right around the corner, folks, so if you want some fresh 49ers threads, you can get them right now by using that link at the bottom of your screen, chatsports.com slash 49jersey. A bunch of different jerseys and colors available right now, and because we're in the midst of spring, heading into summer, there are some phenomenal deals right now if you want to get geared up and swagged out leading into the 2022 season. Every player pretty much available. Just use that link, chatsports.com slash 49jersey. Even some retro throwbacks for Joe Montana as well as Jerry Rice. Again, just use that link at the bottom of your screen. I'll put that link in the comment section and the description of this video. We keep the mailbag moving. This question coming in from Jacob. How do you feel about the Verrett re-signing? Yeah, I touched on that briefly here just moments ago. I like it. Now, he's had a lot of bad injury luck torn Achilles, torn ACL, shoulder injury. This guy was a former first-round pick out of TCU who got off to a wonderful start in his NFL career. Unfortunately, that wonderful start was short-lived because the injuries just kept surfacing and they kept on piling up, and it was really unfortunate for him. Now, Verrett in 2020 showed that he can really play. He was a borderline Pro Bowl player. He's made it to a Pro Bowl before, and he was excellent. He was the Niners' best DB that year coming off that Super Bowl. And last year, he would have been cornerback number one if he was able to stay healthy. I like it. He's primarily a depth signing. I don't need him to be a starter, but that's okay. I'd take Josh Norman over uh, – or I'd take – Jason Verrett, excuse me, over Josh Norman and Drake Kirkpatrick. Those players were so clearly washed, whereas I think Jason Verrett, he has some petrol left in the tank. Another super chat coming in from the real OG. It's the GQ, Noah Pena. Sup, Chase? Can the season start already? I'm so bored. Niners biggest fan. I know you are, and you're one of the biggest fans here on the 49ers Report. Greatly appreciate you for tuning in. Congratulations for moving into the new crib. I hope you join us tomorrow. Uh, if you're watching this live on call-in Wednesday, 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific, and call into the show so that I can field your calls and we can finally interact via the phone line. But, yeah, the season needs to start, man. I was thinking about this the other day. I miss Niners football. I miss getting lit on our watch parties. I miss being able to analyze the game and break down some of the tape. The news and rumors game, we do it better than anybody else, but I can't wait to talk some actual football. 
Itachi Productions, hopefully I pronounced that right. If I didn't, I apologize. What do you think our biggest flaw is for the upcoming 2022 season and then also in 2023? Well, if Trey Lance doesn't work out, it's obviously the quarterback position. I do think he's going to work out. Elite players on both sides of the ball. I don't think there's going to be a ton of pressure on Trey Lance because there are very good players on this football team. I think that Kyle Shanahan did some great work with Robert Griffin III when he was a young, green, and inexperienced quarterback coming out of Baylor when he played for the Washington Redskins at the time, now the Washington Commanders, formerly the Washington football team. So I think Kyle Shanahan is going to be able to develop Trey Lance to a certain degree, and I hope that's the case because the Niners will be a dangerous football team if Trey works out. Outside of that, what's the biggest flaw? <sighs> Man, I, maybe safety because right now you have Jimmy Ward, and then if you're starting Talanoa Hufonga, I'd say that's a little bit of a concern. He's a little bit slow for me as a starting safety, although as a depth piece, I really like him. Very good on special teams as a guy who can play in the box and go home on some blitz packages. I like him there, but I'd like to see the safety spot upgraded just a bit. I'd say that's the biggest flaw. If you're subscribed to us here on the 49ers Report, thank you so much from my heart. Greatly appreciate all of you for supporting the channel as we approach 60,000 subscribers as the largest 49ers News and Rumors channel right here on YouTube. We're also on Rumble, but if you are subscribed, I want to show you some love in the comment section by responding back. Just type SF in the comments right now, and if you haven't subscribed and you want elite 49ers coverage, well, here on the channel, we're pushing out videos every single day. Jamie Emery, next up on board. Does Brandon Ayuk have more yards this season than Debo because of Trey's arm? It's a fascinating question. I'm going to say no, and I hope it is no, because I hope that Debo Samuel gets a contract extension. I hope that he balls out. I hope that he proves that he's once again not just a great weapon, but a very good wide receiver and not just a Swiss Army knife. I do think, though, that Brandon Ayuk is going to break out. This guy, the last two years, the first two years of his career, um, you know, he's had 700 plus yards, 800 plus yards his first two years in the league. And this is after he only played, you know, what, 12, 13 games as a rookie in year one during a COVID season where there was no training camp or anything like that. Uh, this is also last year after he was really in the doghouse and didn't really get the breakout until the middle portion of the season. I think Ayuk with Trey Lance is going to be a vertical threat and a very dangerous player in this offense. James Kramer, last question in this mailbag. When Jimmy is off the books, what do we do with the money? Extensions or what? I'm thinking a Debo Samuel contract extension. I'm thinking Nick Bosa and everybody is going to freak out about these contracts, right? Because let's say that Debo gets 25 to $30 million per year. Let's say that Nick Bosa is somewhere in that range. Honestly, if not a little bit more, it is realistic. Don't act as though it's not. People are going to freak out about these contracts, but keep in mind that the salary cap is only going to continue to increase. These contracts are only going to continue to get larger. So the quicker that you can sign these players to these deals, the more money in the long run that you might be able to save. Because quarterbacks might be making more and wide receivers might be making more. Tyree Kill, $30 million per year. The next big contract for a wideout, let's say Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, it might be for $35 million per year. So I think with that money, it's contract extensions for some of the homegrown talent in Nick Bosa as well as Debo Samuel. Before we hop on out of here for this respective mailbag, if I didn't answer your question, if you want to talk about life, if you want to talk about all things Niners, be sure to hit me up on my social media pages. I also post all of our content on my Twitter feed and Instagram. I put some clips over there. At Chase underscore senior, it's the same handle on both social media platforms. Hit me up, slide in my DMs. Can't wait to chop it up with the faithful.